Hello, and welcome to the Security and User Permissions webinar. Today we're going to be going over the basics of managing user access in the Open Dental program. At the end of the webinar, you should feel comfortable adding employees, adding users and user groups, managing passwords, defining group permissions, and managing global permissions. First, I would like to briefly discuss why it is important to set up security, and there are three main reasons. The first of which is HIPAA compliance. We have a web page here that goes into detail regarding the importance of making sure the office is HIPAA compliant. The most important point to remember here is that the responsibility for HIPAA compliance falls to each dental office and that Open Dental Software is a tool that can help you stay HIPAA compliant. You will also find information on this page regarding the security risk analysis that dental practices must conduct as part of the security rule. The second reason it is important to set up security is to ensure that your data is secure. There are three levels of security. The first is network security, and that's largely managed by the office and their IT. This includes firewalls, MySQL security, and the sharing of the A to Z folder. We have a web page about this as well, simply titled Computer Security. And the next level is computer security, which is the security of the computers themselves, also managed by the office and their IT. This is going to be Windows usernames and things like that. And then the final level of security is security within Open Dental, which is the focus of this webinar today. The final reason that setting up security is important is to prevent the risk of fraud and embezzlement. Through the use of users and the audit trail, actions inside of Open Dental are tracked. It is important that all employees have their own password protected user so that each audit trail log has their user attached. We also suggest that the employee use the admin user or the employee that uses the admin user to also have a second user in the software for day-to-day -day use. Only using the admin user when making changes that should be logged as admin. This is also important for time card security, which we'll go into a little bit more detail about later in the webinar. There are five different audit trails that track information inside of Open Dental, and we're gonna very briefly touch on those. The first of which is the main audit trail. This can be found in Tools and Audit Trail. This is going to track the vast majority of permissions inside of Open Dental. You're able to filter by the permission itself, by user, set a date range, have specific patients or for all patients. You can also set limits to the number of rows returned and set more date ranges over here. You always wanna make sure you're clicking refresh whenever you change anything on the screen. It's also printable. The second audit trail is an appointment audit trail. Let's go ahead and quickly create an appointment here. If we double click into an appointment, we can see an audit trail. And you'll see when it was originally created, when it was edited, when it was moved, and then again when it was edited. So this is going to track specifically permissions that relate to the appointment itself. The next is the chart audit trail, located in the show tab. We'll just click this audit button right here, and then you'll see that additional lines of data have come up here, such as this invalid group note. The next is our insurance audit trail. So if we go into any insurance plan, you can check the audit trail, set dates, and check to see when that insurance plan has been changed in the past. And then lastly, we have the task audit trail, which is located within the history button on the task themselves. And that's going to show you the history of the task. Since we just created this one, it doesn't have any log data yet. All right, so the first area that we're going to cover is the creation of employees. 
This is important for the use of time cards, and we'll discuss how to link employees to users a little bit later in the webinar. So if we go into lists and employees, from this screen, you're able to see all of the employees currently created. You're also able to add additional employees. So let's go ahead and add one for this webinar. You can also add a middle initial if you would like, and then the payroll ID is only going to be used if the office is using ADP. You can also mark someone as hidden or unhidden. This is specifically going to be used if an office has an employee that no longer is there, but you still want to make sure that all that historical data is still in the software. We also have the advanced tool to delete all unused employees. This is going to be documented better in the web manual itself. Employees are really important for time card use, and we will go more in depth on how that's important in the time card webinar. It's going to be a separate webinar completely. Now we want to get into our security setup window. That's going to be in setup, security, and security settings. I want to do that one more time, and I want us to note right here this other add user button. Remember that for a little bit later, we're going to refer back to it, but for now we're just going to go into security settings. In the top left-hand corner, we have our filters, which help us find specific users. This is especially helpful for larger offices. So we're able to see which users have providers attached, employees attached, and any users who have neither an employee or provider attached, or just all of our users. We can filter by the user groups assigned, or all user groups. If the office is using clinics, you can also filter by clinic. All of our clinic features are going to be explained much more in depth in our clinics webinar. And then also you can search by username. And then lastly, you can check this hidden users box here, and that's going to show any users that have since been hidden. Then we have our users window here within the security settings window. You're able to sort this by single clicking on any of these column headers, clicking again to reverse the order. It's able to be done on all of them, but by default, it's going to be alphabetical, starting with A and going down from there. You're also able to double click into any of the users in this screen. And we're gonna talk about this user edit screen a little bit more in depth here in just a minute. In the middle of this window, we have our user groups column, and you can see if I click between different users, it's going to highlight which user groups they are associated to. You're also able to assign user groups directly from this screen. You can single click to change, or if you have a user that needs to be in multiple user groups, you can hold down the control button on your keyboard and select multiple groups. User groups in Open Dental are additive, meaning that if you have a user group that you assign many of your users to with specific permissions, but certain employees need additional permissions, you can create a user group with those additional permissions and then add them this way, and the user will have all of the group's permissions from all of their groups. On the right-hand side, we have the effective permissions for user column. This is a read-only view of the permissions for the user that you currently have highlighted. You cannot edit permissions from this window. And then lastly, we have our Add User button right here in the middle. We're going to go ahead and click that. We're going to add a new user. I'm going to go ahead and type their name, what I want their username to be in that first field. If they have a DoSpot user ID, you can go ahead and enter that there. If they have multiple ones for multiple clinics, that can be entered here. Again, that's going to go more in depth in our clinic webinar. You can also have them require a password reset. That means that next time this user logs in, they're going to be prompted to reset their password. Is hidden is going to hide them from most areas inside of Open Dental. This is only going to be used if you have users who are no longer in use. You're also able to assign user groups from this window. Again, holding down control to add multiple groups. Add the employee, that's important so that they have time card rights whenever they log in. 
And then also if they have a provider, you can add that in with them as well. You can go ahead and create the password for the user. Clicking show if you wanna make sure that you typed it in correctly. And then click okay and that's gonna set their password. And clicking okay would save this, cancel would cancel it out. Quickly, I'm gonna talk about these other two tabs up here. Clinics is gonna go way more in depth inside of our clinics webinar, as I have said, but this is where you're going to edit those settings. And then alert subscriptions, alert subscriptions are managed, meaning these are the subscription alerts that they are going to receive with, when they are logged into the software. Next, we have our user groups tab. This tab is where you will create and edit the user groups themselves. It is important to note that permissions are assigned by user group, not by user. First column we have here are all of our user groups that we've created. If you click through them, you can see that the permissions that have been assigned to them in that middle column are changing as we click through. You can also add a new group from this screen. If you ever wanted to edit the name of a group or hide a group, you could highlight it and edit. You're actually gonna be able to delete from the screen. There's not a hidden feature for user groups. Then you can go through the middle window here and add the permissions for that specific group. Do they need appointments module and chart module for this specific group. Some of our permissions, such as the edit completed procedure full, are going to pop up this edit group permission window. By setting lock dates, you can prevent users from editing historical data or backdating new items. Lock dates can be set by user group or globally. And this is gonna go in much more detail on the web manual. Leaving no date or no day range in that window will give full access since the beginning of time for the database. We also have the set all button, which will give all permissions in one click. There is no undo button for this, so be sure that you are wanting to do this. This is helpful if someone should have all permissions or if they should have almost all permissions, and then you can go back and take away the permissions they shouldn't have. Then lastly, you have the users currently associated. So if we go through and single click on our user groups on the left-hand side, it will update with the users that currently have that user group assigned to them. The last area of the security setup window that we need to cover is the global security settings window, which can be accessed by clicking in the top left-hand corner right here. We're gonna quickly talk through each of these checkboxes and what they affect, but they are all discussed much more in depth on the web manual. First, we have time card security enabled. When this is checked, it enables the next box. It also limits users without the edit all time cards permission from viewing other employees' time cards. You can see if we uncheck it, the next one will be grayed out. Users cannot edit their own time card. This overrides edit the all time cards security permission. When it's checked, users cannot edit their own time card. And when it's unchecked, users can make changes to their own time card. Usually this does remain unchecked since error fixing is tracked well within time cards. Then we have our disable monthly backup reminder. Log off when Windows logs off. When this is checked, it's going to automatically log current user out of Open Dental whenever they log out of Windows. Passwords must be strong. When this is checked, all passwords must be at least eight characters long and contain at least one number, one uppercase letter, and one lowercase letter. And when unchecked, passwords are not required to be strong. Strong passwords require special character. When this is checked, when passwords must be strong, they must also include a special character, such as the pound sign, the dollar sign, or the exclamation point. And when it's unchecked, they're not required. Force password change if not strong. When this is checked, 
when passwords must be strong, users without a strong password will be prompted to create a strong password next time they log in. And when unchecked, users will not be required to change from not strong to strong, even when strong is required. And then last of the checkboxes here, manually enter login credentials. When this is checked, users will have to manually enter their username and password. When it is unchecked, users will select their username from a list and then type their password. The default user group selection is extremely important if you want to use the add user button that we pointed to earlier. If there is no default user group set, the button has no functionality. Now we have the automatic log off time in minutes. This simply means that if a time is entered here, such as five minutes, after five minutes of an activity, the user will automatically be logged off. Domain login is a way for users to be automatically logged in as determined by the Windows user they are logged into on the computer. It is an advanced feature and there is more documentation regarding its use in the web manual. For global lock, global lock dates bundle multiple permissions into one setting. Global lock dates prevent editing of old items and are the only way to prevent backdating of new items. See the full list of permissions to identify which are affected by global lock dates. If you click this change button, you have a few different fields here that you can enter information in. You have a lock date, and this will lock the date entered and all prior dates. Lock days, this means that changes will only be allowed within a set number of days from the original entry, such as one day, only today, zero to disable. And then lock includes administrators. Check this box to include users in the admin group from this limitation. Unchecked means that they will have full permissions with no locked dates. One other point I want to talk about before we wrap up here is that we also have the security permissions details page on our web manual, and it's going to go into much more depth as to what each single permission means. And then the last thing I wanted to quickly go over here is in setup security, this add user button. Since we did set our default user group, when we click add user, it's going to default to that group and we can go ahead and add a new user straight from that button. And from here you can change, add additional, and do everything else that you did from within the security window when we added that other user. Thank you so much for joining us today for the Security and User Permissions webinar. As always, if you have any questions, feel free to call our support line for assistance.